Good afternoon, I'm Ed Pozzuoli, CEO of Trip Scott Law Firm, and today we're joined by the Mayor of Fort Lauderdale, Dean Trintellis. Uh, Dean, welcome. Good morning, thank you. Mayor, uh, let's start by the pressing news on, this, on the sewer issues in, in what's a, uh, impacted Rio Vista and Coral Ridge, but is a citywide issue. Give us a little update. So we have now been able to embrace the challenge and we've taken on uh, multiple levels of responsibility here. We've, we are uh, slated to replace the, the pipe within Rio Vista. It's going to take about four to eight weeks and we're already planning uh, to have that done in a shortened period of time. And then we're gonna do the entire length of the seven and a half mile uh, trunk line for that sewage uh, area of the city. That should be done within 18 months. That'll be a complete replacement and create a redundant system uh, utilizing the existing uh, pipe to reline it and make it available in case there are any breaks in the future. That in addition to fresh water, which we're also looking to uh, rebuild our five ash water treatment plant, I think that's going to happen. Uh, this, the commission will be dealing with that very shortly. And of course, stormwater, we've got a number of areas, we call them adaptation action areas, in which we uh, are going to address major flooding uh, areas that we have. We've already been in the process of doing right. this, and how we're paying for that, you know, we've increased the, uh, the uh, impact fee on new construction, so any new buildings that are, that are approved going forward will, will now be paying over three times as much of an impact fee. It's a comprehensive, almost a Marshall Plan on how to address this problem, and uh, it's been neglected for years, but this commission is taking it head on and we're really uh, you know, eager to get things done. You don't anticipate having to go to the residents for additional taxes at all or no? It's not so much taxes as it is we would, ha it comes from the ratepayers, those who use the, the water system and the sewage system. That so it's more of a use fee then? It's a usage fee, right. So they will be increased in order to pay for this. And how long do you figure the project will take? Well, <clears throat> we anticipate doing the initial phase of the project within, like I said, in Rio Vista, it will be within four to six weeks. But the um, overall project? But the overall plan is 18 months to do the seven and a half mile uh, trunk line. Line, but the other plan, uh, the water treatment plant and, and the stormwater within, uh, within four to five years. And the good thing about that is we're going to make, we're going to harden it to category five strength so that uh, should a Dorian co finally come ashore, you know, we are, we're, right now we're defenseless and uh, we need to be more proactive in that regard. So it's a vulnerability that you're looking to address long term. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So we're also looking, uh, I'm, I'm going to start a new initiative. Uh, beginning this year to once and, and once and for all address water pollution. Our, our waterways in the canals and our rivers, especially along Las Olas, uh, we have suffered through um, uh, some pretty terrible uh, impact on our waterways and uh, it's unhealthy and uh, it's time we finally address that and see how we can remedy that. Talk a little bit about that piece because obviously there was concern, it, it dovetails a little bit on the and the sewer breaks. Correct. Um, but how do you address that? Well, if the sewer breaks certainly exacerbate it. Yeah. So no doubt about that. Right. But we've had uh, chronic conditions within our waterways where, where and, and, and there are multiple sources. Uh, there could be fertilizer runoff, there could be, you know, pet uh, disposal uh, uh, that runs off into the, right. into the, but more importantly, it's the boaters. It's the boaters that dump into the water, whether they're liverboards or lazy people who come in from a day's tour out, out in the water and they, 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 instead of using the discharge stations that we have, that they, they just dump in the water. And, and you know, we've got to be much better and more aggressive at monitoring the situation, making, adding perhaps more, more stations for people to deposit their, their uh, effluent and, uh, and clean up our waterways, find new ways to perhaps uh, increase the uh, the flow of water. The Las Olas Isles, for example, the, you know, you come to the 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 beginning of a, of an island, and uh, it just stops at Las Olas. So there's no there's no way for the water to like cleanse itself. Right. So it gets stuck at the end. It gets stuck at the end. So you know, does that mean we should tunnel under Las Olas and allow for you know water to to uh, flush itself out? There are all kinds of methodologies that we're going to be exploring, and I think that's the uh, it's going to be on tap for the next 24 months. So before we leave the the sewer issue, uh, residents shouldn't be concerned, at least today, of being able to use water uh, coming out of the faucet in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, the, the sewer break had nothing to do with fresh water. And so that's no a whole other there. issue, correct. Okay. And then, so talk a little bit, let's pivot a little bit to some of the other future plans of the city, because let's face it, you know, this is a vibrant city. 
and you know, you're leading it, but talk a little bit about the future of Fort Lauderdale as you see it. So Fort Lauderdale has made a decision a number of years ago that they wanted to build a, 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 a downtown. And uh, so decisions that are being made, that were made years ago are still being fulfilled. There are a lot of buildings that were approved that have yet to be built. And so uh, that cycle of building will continue because th those are decisions already made. What this commission is, is uh, committed to doing is making sure that all future decisions are based on a smart growth technique so that we make sure that, that we are, we've accommodated traffic, ensure that the amenities of life like grocery stores, drug stores and so forth, not just restaurants and bars are included in the mix. And so, um, and that creates a, a downtown where you can eliminate the need for cars and people will be able to walk to places. So, because traffic is the number one concern of most people yeah. in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Uh, and if we can eliminate the need for cars, then that will re pull cars off the, off the roads. Um, we're excited about the uh, convention center that the county is planning to build in the new hotel, mainly because they're going to build a bypass road right. that's going to siphon off traffic off of 17th Street. And with that, um, then hopefully we'll be able to alleviate the traffic problems that we've had for Describe years. Describe for there. people what that bypass road at least this plan looks okay, like. Okay, so you know when we had 9/11, right. the, the federal government said you know, clo close down the port because you can't allow you know random people driving through it like you and I used to do. Right. It was great, right? Up, right. And we never Cut had a traffic port. problem no on 17th problem. Street, right? right. So um, so when they closed the port to vehicular traffic, we now found ourselves with a situation. So the the county is going to build a, a bypass road that's going to um, that's going you'll be able to enter coming south. From the airport, instead of going all the way up to 17th Street, uh, on, I believe it's 20th Street, you'll be able to turn on, onto the port property and then you'll end up at Eisenhower Boulevard and bypassing all the. So, bypass uh, most of 17th Street. Correct, exactly. And so that'll alleviate the traffic the that traffic goes up there, that, particularly on the weekends. Exactly. Now, those going to the beach, you know, will still, they'll, they'll be able to use that road, but those that were using the, the businesses and so forth along 17th Street, the hotels and restaurants and so forth, uh, they won't be impacted by people who are going to the beach. What we found out is that most of the people using 17th Street were not stopping at 17th Street. They were continuing on to the beach. the beach, yeah. right. And then what other plans of Fort Lauderdale with respect to traffic? Obviously, there's a there's a commitment, say, to Bright Line and some of the other mass transit opportunities. So um, we have uh, important decisions to make in the future, and uh, uh, and one of the things that we've been talking about, for example, is trying to benefit from the the railroad tracks that Bright Line has has restored, and uh, now there's this idea of a coastal link. Right. The coastal link is going to be important because it will allow people to live and work along this the rail route. Uh, and be able to use the, uh, the uh, more frequent train use. The problem that's going to create is the east-west traffic flow, Broward Boulevard, Sunrise and the like, they're going to be impacted by a greater, greater frequency of, right. of, of, of trains. So the, uh, the State Department of Transportation has been talking about uh, building a bridge which would devastate the downtown. So I've been advocating uh, a tunnel that goes through the city uh, which would el completely eliminate the, the train above ground and, uh, uh, and allow for an easier flow on the new river because, it the, because the, the train bridge really impacts the, uh, the commerce up, up, uh, upstream on the new river. So we're doing our best to come up with ideas. It's going to be more expensive to do a tunnel, but in the end it will be the best investment that this community could ever have done. But that's going to be a healthy debate, obviously, about how to address that. It, it will be a healthy debate, but in the end we have multiple sources of, of funding. The federal government has already indicated a willingness to participate in, in funding. We have the one cent sales tax, which Fort Lauderdale is entitled to its share. <clears throat> we also have uh, um, uh, state funding, so we're going to, you know, going to do what we can to try to bring in as many resources as possible to make this happen. And and in the end, uh, in fact, the MPO has also talked about uh, wanting to participate. What are some of the things Fort Lauderdale is thinking uh, with respect? Since we all live, uh, one of the great things about Fort Lauderdale is the waterways. Correct. But uh, sustainability over the longer term. Uh, for whatever the cause is, uh, flooding and whatnot, how do we manage that? Well, we're already in the process of, uh, of implementing plans. Earlier I touched upon uh, the storm, storm water, water, right, adaptation action areas. But the big issue <clears throat> really is rising sea level and the impact of saltwater intrusion into our estuaries. And um, 
So uh, we've, we've worked with the county and the county has indicated to us that we're pretty good up, up until the middle part of the century. Uh, our freshwater supplies won't be impacted. Um, so we're gonna, re we're gonna build our water treatment plant as a, a normal water treatment plant. We had also talked about a desalination plant, which I don't think uh, is, is going to be right for Fort Lauderdale after all the study we've done. So, uh, <clears throat> so once, and, and in addition to that, we also uh, have worked with the state, and we are we have we are contracted with the state to tap into the C51 reservoir for um, for additional uh, freshwater supplies. So um, so we're thinking ahead. We're thinking next generations ahead. How we're going to make sure that our freshwater supplies are not impacted by rising sea levels. And there's something that we've worked on together with the committee with Judge Demetrio Leas, the federal courthouse. The federal courthouse finally got some funding out of out of Washington. Yes, it's a, it's a building that's looking for a home. Uh, we're <laughs> uh, there's a lot of debate and a lot of discussion. Right now, the uh, General Service Administration is, uh, is looking for the right site. Um, I wish they'd hurry up because it's uh, interfering with our ability to plan our downtown. But it's a wonderful addition. Uh, it cements the federal presence in our community, which we need to do. Right. And, uh, and we want to make sure that wherever it goes, it's, uh, it's, it works within the neighborhoods and doesn't adversely impact anybody, but in fact is symbiotic with whatever is going on already in our community. Well, Mayor, I really do appreciate the time that we spent together. There is so much going on in yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I mean, put aside you know the, the crisis of the day, but the bottom line is that there's so much planning and we do appreciate your public service. Oh, thank you. So thank you for joining us. Happy to do it. Thank you.